It seems like lately Gary Gensler has been all the focus of conversations in the crypto space. Today is not really going to be any different though. In the Wall Street Journal, Stu Alderati fires back at Gary Gensler's latest piece in the journal. This is called The SEC Wants to Be America's Crypto Cop, but instead of protecting consumers, the SEC is leaving them holding the bag. We'll take a look at what he had to say. And Rosalind Layton, fresh after having her piece taken down by Forbes, the one talking about Gary Gensler needing to resign, has a new uh, write-up out today called Gary Gensler Says Crypto's Treated Just Like the Market, but 200 SEC lawsuits say otherwise. We'll take a full look at that just in case it mysteriously disappears from the internet again. But if we haven't met before, my name is Frank Cho. I'm here to help you live a richer life. On this channel, we talk about cryptocurrency, personal finance, and investing. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, do it now. That way I can keep you informed of all the latest news and updates. Let's take a quick look at the market before we dive in. We're back up to $981 billion for the total market, about a 1% increase from yesterday. Bitcoin back to $20,200. Ethereum just over $1,500. XRP at about $0.33. Cents, and Cardano at about $0.45. Cents. You can see where everything stacks up in the total market here. Now, just a quick note here. Brad Garlinghouse tweeted out saying he can't comment on the validity of the slew of allegations that have just come out. And I know other channels are talking about this. I haven't had a chance to dive into it. So I'm going to refer you to Brad Kimes and any number of other people talking about this just because I haven't had a time to research it and I won't today, honestly. So uh, he's denying any of these allegations and can say that uh, he has not met or spoken to Kyle Roach. So uh, check that out. I'll link this down below if you want to see what he's referring to. But again, he's denying allegations here. This deals with Avalanche and everything that's going on there. So um, if you're interested, check it out in the links and check out those other channels covering it. But here, I'm not going to have a chance to talk about it today. Now, Stu Alderati is replying here to Gary Gensler's piece from about a week ago. So uh, I think it was last Sunday that uh, he did post that, Gary Gensler, that is. So Stu Alderati, this is from yesterday, which is also Sunday. Uh, today is Monday, the 29th. So the SEC wants to be America's crypto cop. Gary Gensler always refers to himself as the cop on the beat. And Stu Alderati is coming out. Of course, he's the general counsel of Ripple. Uh, coming out against this, he says, in the SEC treats crypto like the rest of the capital markets, the op-ed that Gensler wrote. SEC Chair Gary Gensler appoints the SEC as the cop on the beat for crypto. Gensler is pushing aside his fellow regulators and front-running President Biden's executive order, which directed agencies to collaborate on establishing clear regulatory frameworks for crypto. Gensler writes that whether a car runs on gas or electricity, you still need a seatbelt. No one disputes that. But electric cars don't need gas, and in his analogy, it is the gas that the SEC is selling. Gensler looks to punish anyone who isn't buying it. The SEC's shakedown of BlockFi led to a mess. BlockFi ended up on the auction block, and two other companies with similar businesses went belly up. Consumers weren't protected. They were left holding the bag. What we need is regulatory clarity for crypto, not the SEC swinging its bully club to protect its turf at the expense of the more than 40 million Americans in the crypto economy. Alderati has a great point here. The lack of clarity from the SEC has only sown confusion within the marketplace, and people without the clear guidance from a regulatory body are behaving in the way that they think is appropriate. This can lead to problems. Without those guidelines, the bad actors will run amok. The good actors will attempt to do the best they can, but find themselves on the wrong end of lawsuits, like in the SEC versus Ripple case, or the 200 other SEC lawsuits that are mentioned here in Forbes. We'll take a dive into this article now. So Rosalind Layton writes, By law, regulatory agencies should only regulate that which they have authority to regulate. Deference is allowed to some degree should the agency's justification be reasonable and ideally evidenced. Notably, Congress promulg uh, promulgated the Administrative Procedure Act, 
1946 to guide agency process to publish notice of rulemaking in the Federal Register and provide opportunity for public comment. This standard process seems to have never happened for crypto assets at the SEC. The SEC website does not include an entry for regulation for crypto, either completed or proposed. In May 2022, the SEC beefed up its cyber unit to the Crypto Assets and Cyber Unit, budgeted for 50 dedicated officers and more than doubled the department's headcount. The unit counts some 200 lawsuits since its founding in 2017, with fraud being the subject in at least 80 investigations. The agency also reports restoration of $2 billion in monetary relief. No one denies that crypto assets, like any asset, or technology can be used fraudulently. The very features that make crypto assets desirable can also be exploited, including but not limited to the ease of startup and use, anonymization, and lack of intermediaries. Plus, some users undoubtedly can be greedy and gullible. It does not help that some have disguised crypto scams as legitimate activities. It's true as well that at least $1 billion had been lost in crypto fraud in 2021. However, this pales in comparison to the more than $15 billion lost overnight by investors when the SEC brought the $1.3 billion non-fraud lawsuit against enterprise blockchain company Ripple Labs when the news dropped exchanges stopped trading XRP currency. And this is important. The SEC may be getting some of these gains back from market participants, supposedly. But when you look at the retail investors being burned, especially here in the SEC versus Ripple case, the value lost immediately eliminated from the wallets of these people. People like you and I, who are retail investors, is really staggering. And it's monumental in comparison to what the SEC is actually accomplishing. And what they aren't accomplishing still is this lack of of clarity, And she'll continue here saying the SEC's broad brush approach with a priori singles out all crypto offerings, exchanges, lending, DeFi, NFTs, and stablecoins looks like guilty until proven innocent. So many lawsuits suggest the SEC prefers regulation by enforcement, a lawsuit against a financial actor meant to extract a settlement rather than regulation by rules, express guidelines for the trade of currency, securities, and other assets. If the SEC can devote 50 amongst 4,000 employees to detect crypto fraud, a handful could work on rulemaking to help legitimate crypto actors. The SEC has not responded to requests for comment. The chairman's view, and she's going to refer here back to the piece just put out by Gensler in the journal, the one that Alderati was coming back against. So in this recent piece, the SEC treats crypto like the rest of the capital markets. Securities laws that protect investors continue to apply even when new technologies come along, said SEC Chair Gary Gensler. And he made a seemingly reasonable pitch for investor protection against fraud and claimed that SEC rules protect against this. Indeed, he claimed that crypto lending is already subject to SEC regulation and that the rules have been around for decades. However, a cursory search on the SEC website on the term crypto lending only yields results related to the SEC's BlockFi enforcement. No rules as such. Instead, the chairman advises, I encourage platforms offering crypto lending to come in and talk to SEC staff. What is sec.gov for if not to read rules? Why have a website that's supposed to provide some guidance if it does not do so? On various occasions, Gensler observed that every digital asset is probably a security and that every firm should know that. However, this is not what the SEC said in the past. Look at the Hinman speech. There is principled ongoing debate in legal and academic communities that crypto assets could be either currency, a medium of exchange, or security, investment in an asset with an expectation of return, or both. This important distinction is not explicit on the SEC.gov website, and the SEC acknowledges both categories do exist. This question of currency or security is at the heart of the SEC versus Ripple case and the status of the digital currency XRP. 
Apparently, SEC leaders themselves debated the question internally for some time, but never conducted an inquiry or rulemaking. Judge Netburn has repeatedly ordered the internal documents on the 2018 speech be produced to Ripple and Discovery, but the SEC refuses to comply. Her July opinion and order blasted the agency for hypocrisy and behavior which suggests that the SEC is adopting its litigation positions to further its desired goal and not out of faithful allegiance to the law. The SEC further charges that Ripple should have known XRP was a security from the ledger's debut in 2013, even though the SEC itself did not know until it filed the suit in 2020. And remember that XRP existed before Ripple as a company did as well. A similar argument underpins the SEC versus library case, though it involves a different technology and objective. Gensler observed in a speech at the 2021 Aspen Security Forum, Make no mistake, it doesn't matter whether it's a stock token, a stable value token backed by securities, or any other virtual product that provides synthetic exposure to underlying securities. These products are subject to the securities laws and must work within our securities regime. Complying with the SEC's securities regime is a tall order for any enterprise, whether a major bank or a loan developer. That fellow SEC commissioner, Hester Peirce, posted a proposal for a token safe harbor to facilitate participation in and the development of a functional and decentralized network exempted from the registration provisions of the federal securities laws for three years suggests that the SEC's rules are less than clear. Back at the Aspen event, Gensler also claimed that the Supreme Court's Howey benchmark is a three-part test, when it is in fact four. The critical fourth prong is the investment contract defined as an investment of money in a common enterprise with the expectation of profit to be derived from the efforts of others. Note, though, the word solely is important there. It appears that Gensler eliminated this because it contradicts the reasoning in the Ripple and Library cases, which posits that the tokens per se are securities regardless of how they are packaged and sold. What the SEC should do. The SEC was founded in 1934 in reaction to the 1929 stock market crash and with the purpose to protect markets from manipulation. However, The SEC's own actions to regulate by enforcement are a kind of manipulation through arbitrary and capricious decisions and lack of process and rules. Indeed, some 90% of SEC cases are settled rather than concluded in court. Such a high degree of enforcement and settlement suggests that SEC rules are not clear and possibly non-existent. There are hundreds of SEC lawyers tasked with prosecuting companies for failure to follow rules that Gensler says exist but which cannot be found on their website. Gensler can protect investors through transparency. Crypto actors have begged Congress and the SEC for clear rules for years, but it hasn't happened. Gary Gensler himself has been on the job for a year and a half. It's time to get this done. And this is really important. As time marches on, Gary Gensler becomes more and more entrenched in his power. We still do not have clarity, despite the long tenure he's now had at the SEC. Having previously been the chair of the CFTC, he should be intimately aware of the powers of both agencies, as he is well-versed in blockchain technology and what it entails He should understand this, and many believe this was the reason why he was selected, because of his understanding, because he was even teaching about this technology at MIT. But we have not seen him provide clear guidelines, and the regulation by enforcement continues. And we still await many decisions in the SEC versus REPL case and others. Let me know what you think is going on in the comments below. Is Gensler stalling clarity, or is he just unable to make up his mind on what he wants to see? Or maybe it's a lack of consensus, or there might be something brewing in Congress. Let me know what you think. I'm curious to know your opinions. I hope you found the information here to be helpful. If you did, as always, drop a like. It helps the channel a ton and keeps you informed. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so I can keep you up to date on all the latest news. Thank you so much for spending some time here with me. I do truly appreciate it. Have a fantastic rest of your day and start to the week, and I will see you in the next one.